Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jared. It has been a long time since I've said that, and um, I figured that for my reintroduction to making videos, I would keep this kind of casual, a lot less production than some of my other stuff, but I think that that can be good sometimes, and um, you know, it's just gonna let me kind of talk candidly, a little more candidly about something that I know really well because I do it every day. Um, and that is layering materials together. Uh, and so this is this is kind of especially useful for stuff like trying to digitize print work. Um, namely, as you can see here, I'm gonna go over the process of creating a photorealistic label texture today. Um, the keen eyed among you who work with labels all the time will probably be able to pick out that there are three separate materials being layered together here. Um, using about five different maps and I'm basically going to recreate it on a different product for you today um, because I just have to for work anyways so why would I not show you um, using this uh, it, this is basically going to be good for any sort of texture layering um, but I'm, I'm just going to go through exactly how you mix different shaders together uh, so, uh, this is just a blend file that I have set up already. It's a simple lighting setup. I have the lights hidden from camera view, so that's why you can't see them. Um, and it's just sitting on a psych and there's a camera. So that's what we're working with. I'm gonna go over to my shading tab. If yours doesn't look like mine, don't freak out. As long as you can see what you're doing and have a shader network open, you can follow along. Um, cool, cool. So I'm gonna click on my label, make, make a new texture. And so the first thing that we have to do to create this label is make the base texture, which is basically gonna have stuff like color, roughness, um, normal if you have that. Like if your label has a tactile layer, um, you will have a normal map. So I'm gonna drag in my color, my roughness, and my normal, and we will go ahead and get started. Um, so these are all just maps. Generally, things will have maps, PBR textures. If um, if you're doing procedural stuff, you probably know what you're doing anyways. So just make your material. Um, my base material is just gonna have color, like I said, roughness, and then um, just as good practice in case my lighting scenario ever needed it, I'm gonna add a color ramp by hitting Shift A and dropping it right in between here. And so that's for like, if I need to change how reflective this roughness map is, I can do that with this color ramp. I don't actually need to, I know that it's um, perfectly accurate as it is. And then for our normal map here, we are going to shift A and drop in a, not a noise texture, shift A, no, uh, normal map. I got a little lost there. I'm going to uh, hold alt and right click and drag to lazy connect this and that'll go color to color and then we can do the same thing from this map to the principal BSDF and that will give us our normal. Uh, it looks <laughs> crazy and goofy like bubble letters so anybody who's worked with labels knows that that's not quite close to accurate. Even 0.2 is a little much. I'm gonna go 0.125 for mine. And that looks pretty accurate to how these look in real life, except I think, I don't know if this is just for like my material specifically. So I'm gonna preface uh, what I do next with that. You can kind of play around with this and see what looks physically accurate in your scene, but these are a little too perfect. Like there's not very much fall off on the edges of this normal map as it is. So I changed tangent space to blender object space and this is much closer to how these actually look in real life, this tactile layer on this label. I don't know if that works for all cases, but on these labels specifically, if I go back from uh, Blender Object Space to Tangent Space, you can see this is like oddly just bubbly and uniform. And if I go to Blender Object Space, they just have like a different fall off. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not technically educated in this, so, if somebody wants to explain that to me, they can. <laughs> so this becomes now our base material. And this is something like, 
now I just need to continue to add to this. And so for uh, my label in particular, I know that I need to add a chrome layer on top of this and then a color foil label on top of that or layer on top of that. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna add in another principled BSDF. And I think, uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna add in a principled. You can add in, um, like if you're adding emissive textures or something like that, you can just add in emissive. Um, but I need to make chrome, so I'm gonna go metallic all the way up, specular 0.7 and then roughness on like 0.05 because it's not perfectly reflective per se, but um, you know, if I just connect this to my surface, you can see more or less, this is what a chrome layer on like a label would look like. So um, now I need to mix these two together such that literally like this line is gonna become chrome and this text is gonna become chrome and that's kind of it, um, but that's how the label is. So I need to add these together. So what I'm gonna do is bring in a mix shader and this is gonna be shader one, this is gonna be shader two. Again, that is just alt right clicking to lazy connect these. Um, and then, so this factor now, if I just lazy connect this to the surface, I guess, this factor now is the, is telling this node, like which of these am I showing? And so if it's on 0.5, you're basically getting 50% and 50% of each showing through. If it's on one, you get all of the shader two. If it's on uh, zero, you get all of your base layer. And so that's how that works. And so naturally for me to get just, you know, this text down here and this little cutout here to be Chrome, I need an image map to drive this, which uh, as you can probably guess, I already have. This is called um, Car uh, Mamba Sour Paradise Chroming. And so I take this color, plug it into the factor, and you can see that now all of the areas of this are chrome that I needed to be originally. And so you'll naturally now probably say, well, you said you just needed this text and this little box up here to be chrome but uh, a lot of other stuff is, and you would be correct. But like I said, I need to add something, even something else to this. Um, and that is a color foil label. So now um, this mix shader, if we go back to what we said earlier, where you always are gonna have a base layer and then something you need to add to it. This mix shader is now my base layer. And um, I can just bring in my foil texture. So this is basically the same thing I have here with the chroming minus a couple elements. And I need to mix now. So I'll bring in another mix shader. I need to mix my base with another principled BSDF. And so this one, like I said, it's color foil. So if I come back to my example, it's this kind of like it's metallic but it's very rough. Um, this is kind of what foiling is technically in, in print. You can see it, it has a very metallic sheen to it. Um, and so we need to add that on top of what we already have here. So for this label, it's kind of an orange color. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, you know, when it comes to making this for an actual client, you'll probably have like you know, specific numbers, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I have base color there. Metallic's gonna come up to one and then roughness is gonna come down, but not quite as much as we did with the Chrome. Um, like I said, this foil, this foil is, it's shiny, but it's not like perfectly reflective, if that makes sense. So we need to be probably, if I just kinda, you know, eyeball this to what it looks like physically in real life, it's something around I don't know, probably close to like 0.1. I'm just gonna do 0.8 or rather 0.08, sorry. Um, so that looks about correct. And then if I plug this mix shader in here, you can see that we're getting that 50-50 effect, which is what I have this foil map over here for. So my foil layer now becomes uh, all of those areas that were specified for it. So 
um, those maps just work like, you know, the foil label um, or foil layer rather in print. The white areas are foil and the black areas are not. So whatever you need to do to whatever you need to add on top of um, what you already had in your base layer is going to be white in this map that you plug into this factor. And um, the black is going to be what shows through from your base layer. So that is, um, that's basically how you layer things together. And you could go on forever and ever with more mix shaders and more mix shaders. And you could create the most complex label or ground terrain or whatever you need possible. So um, that's kind of a super quick rundown of this whole process. Um, I think if I did the whole thing from start to finish with like creating those maps and lighting and everything, it would probably be an hour long video, but it might be worth it to some people. So let me know if you want that in the comments. And um, yeah, I appreciate you watching. Like I said, just trying to get back into video making with something a little more casual. So I hope it's helped you out and peace.